Okay, I want you guys to imagine if someone was to tell us, Oxford Terrace Baptist Church, that when we gather together, when we meet, it is actually doing harm to us. It is not a good thing. That we're not gathering in unity. There are divisions among us. We are separated. Or even go as far to say that when we do communion once a month, it's not actually the Lord's Supper we are partaking in. Imagine how that would feel. Confronting, challenging, hard to handle, gut-wrenching. They would be some of the words I would use to describe it. Well, in the letter of First Corinthians which was written by the Apostle Paul, that is exactly what he said to the church. To give you a bit of context, Corinth was a very cosmopolitan city. It had many travelers, people coming and going. There was also a wide variety of cultures influencing Corinthian society. This meant that there were a wide range of beliefs and confusion in the church about who to follow and what to follow. And you can see this in earlier in Paul's letter to the Corinthian church in chapter 1. Paul says that some of them follow Paul, some of them follow uh, Paulus, and some of them follow Cephas, and some follow Christ. There were was, there was divisions on who to follow, and they, they didn't know where, where to hold their allegiance to. Poverty was also big in Corinth. There were many poor people, people who had nothing, um, not, much, not much to eat, couldn't afford um, to put food on the table. And that's why community feasts and gatherings were a common occurrence in Corinth. And these were places where those who had nothing could get something to eat. The issue with these gatherings was that often the poor and the rich would eat separately. The food portions would be different depending on whether you had money or not. Who brought the food would get more food. Um, they would get the better quality food as well. The poor people would be left with the scraps. And the servants who had to work for the rich people would often turn up late and go hungry because there would be nothing left for them. So it definitely wasn't your typical potluck meal. The church in Corinth was not exempt from this practice within their gatherings. And this was one of the reasons why Paul confronted them. He said in 1 Corinthians 11, 17 to 34, and this is the passage for my sermon today. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are more divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat in and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is, my, uh, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me.
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if you were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way, we are being disciplined so that, when we, so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home. So that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. So, obviously, this, our, our context is not the same as it was in Corinth when Paul wrote this. Um, we don't have some of the same issues that, that they did. But there are possibly some similarities um, in our culture to theirs. So what can we learn from this passage? Well, my first point I want to um, present to you is uh, remember Christ together. Here Paul is confronting the Corinthian church about the way they are gathering. He specifically makes mention of the way they partake in the Lord's Supper. He says in verse 20 that it is actually not the Lord's Supper they are having. From verse 23 to 26, he reminds them of what the Lord's Supper is. And we can see um, the Lord's Supper um, being shown in all four gospel books. And uh, I'm going to read to you the one in Luke 22, 19 to 20. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus wants his followers to remember him with this meal of bread and wine. And we, we do that together um, once a month with the, the bread and the, and the grape juice. Um, I just want to share with you a small disclaimer here. I, I actually used to find the ritual of communion rather boring. I didn't really understand the significance of it. And as a kid, I found, found it a bit pointless. But when I actually read what the Bible said, um, I can see how important it really is. When we partake in communion, it takes us back to Jesus. It helps us to remember and reflect on the sacrificial act of love for all creation when he died on the cross. It helps us to remember that Jesus came to save the brokenness of this world and redeem what was lost when sin entered the world. As Paul says in this passage, whenever you eat the bread and drink from the cup, You are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. So whenever we take communion together, we need to do it in remembrance of the one who saved us. We need to remember that sacrificial act of love and um, take our minds back to that moment in time. Whenever we gather We need to gather in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us remember this today and into the future, that whenever we gather out in the world or in the church at a Sunday service or during the week, 
we are to worship and proclaim his name and what we do. Right. My second point. We, are, we need to gather in unity. One of the main things Paul addresses in this passage is the divisions in the Corinthian church. When they gather, they cause more harm than good. Gatherings that are supposed to bring people together and be helpful, um, build people up, these gatherings were not that. They were harmful to each other. The Corinthians were divided. The divisions mentioned in chapter 11 that this passage is found in um, is between the rich and the poor, the haves and the haves nots, have nots. Paul had no praise for the Corinthian church over this matter. Their gatherings and community time did not build people up. They separated and discriminated against those who did not have, have much. They did not give everyone the same treatment. When talking about the Lord's Supper, all believers were welcome to the Lord's table, but not the same table and the same food. And so I've got a picture of a representation of what um, the rich people would have been what it would have been like for them um, taking the Lord's Supper. This is the triclinium, which was in a lot of um, ancient Greco-Roman houses in Corinth. And this is where they would eat um, all the good food, lots of food there, um, and there'd be a select bunch of people who had um, lots that would eat there. And then we've got the atrium, which is where everyone else would eat. Um, and so they were in separate spaces um, when they gathered for the Lord's Supper. As you can see, there were several issues in the Corinthian church regarding divisions. God wants his church to be united, though. Christians are meant to be in community with one another. We are created to be connected and in community and be unified as one body. Later in 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about the church as being the body of Christ. When you become a follower of Jesus, you are being born again into his body. Faith is supposed, supposed to be explored with others. The Lord's Supper is supposed to be done together. Hence why, when the Corinthian church had divisions when partaking in communion and the, the Lord's Supper... Paul tells them in verse 33 to make sure that they eat together. Now, in today's context, we don't necessarily have the same issues that cause divisions as what they did in Corinth. But I would say individualism is an issue in our culture. We can sometimes treat life as about, being, about me, myself, and I. Some comments I've heard um, uh, people say is, life is what you make of it, or only look out for yourself, and mind your own business, although some people do need to hear this sometimes. <laughs> the issue with individualism is that we can so easily lose community and connection with others. Individualistic thinking doesn't really promote the body of Christ. Instead, it encourages people to be self-reliant and selfish. As a church, we need to be pushing back on this individualistic, selfish way of living and live as a community united in Christ. I think, as a community of believers at Oxford Terrace, we actually do this quite well. We are together. There is togetherness here. Um, we, we are unified as the body of Christ. We take communion together. We, we uh, eat the bread and, and drink from the, the cup um, together. 
But I do wonder whether sometimes it has too much of a personal element to it. One question I do have is whether we treat it too personally, all about our personal relationship with God. Sometimes I wonder whether we could talk to our neighbour about what remembrance of Christ means for them. When we are partaking in communion, why not ask a question? What has your faith journey been? What has brought you to this point? We need to be unified together. Another thing I wonder, um, and we have done this before, is why don't, why don't we sometimes have communion as a feast? What would that be like? Sitting around a table, drinking the, the cup, eating the bread, remembering and reflecting on Christ together. Let's share our faith with one another. Let's talk about what brought us to church in the first place. And let's remember Christ together and reflect on what that means. Oh, there's my feast picture. Okay, final point. Love each other. Now, it doesn't explicitly say in in this passage anything about love to be honest like when you read it there's there's no mention of the word love but i think that is the reason why is because that is exactly what the corinthian church is failing to do they are failing to love their neighbor as themselves and there are many parts of scripture that talk about the importance of showing love to one another Back in the Old Testament, Leviticus 19.18, You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Matthew 19.19, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Romans 13.9, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I think we get the picture here. Um, The Bible teaches us to love God and to love one another. In Corinth, they were causing harm to one another. The rich people humiliated the poor with selfishness and greed. When they gathered for the Lord's Supper, it wasn't the Lord's Supper they were eating and drinking because of the way they treated one another. There were divisions. Paul talks about love later in this letter um, in, to, to Corinth, uh, to the church in Corinth. He says that if you, ha- you can have the gift of prophecy, you can have all knowledge, or even have the faith to move mountains. But if you do not have love, if you fail to love the Lord your God and love your neighbor, It means nothing. Now, I think I think we do do this well at Oxford Terrace, and I am so encouraged about how welcoming and accepting people are of people's differences. On Friday night, I was around at Luba's place for for dessert with with a whole bunch of people, and this was a great time. Um, Luba showed love to us all by bringing us into her home and um, making food for us. And it was a great time of community and love with each other. We do show the love of Christ to each other here. We also love our community. We do a lot of community outreach with things like the free holiday programs, the drop-in youth group 
helping at City Mission, helping with the Chester Street Community Gardens. These are just some of the things that we do as a church to show the love of Christ to our community. So be encouraged. Keep up this good work. And this is how we should be acting. Why? Because God commands us to. God loves us and wants us to spread his love to others. We are the body of Christ and no one, no one should be treated any less or more than each other, even though we are different. Sometimes we need to be a bit selfless instead of selfish and think about others. As I have just said, I do think we do this well at Oxford Terrace, so car pie. To wrap it all up, whenever we partake in communion together, let us try not to make the same mistakes the Corinthian church made. Let's gather in love and unity as we remember Christ together. Let me pray. Lord God, thank you that you love us, that you sent your son to die for us, for all of our shortcomings, for all the evil in this world. You have redeemed it all. Lord, thank you. Help us to show love to others. Help us to gather together in unity, unified under Christ. Help us to remember you, to, to read the scripture, learn more, understand more, Lord, when we have been selfish to one another um, or when we have caused divisions, when we have missed an opportunity to love someone, help us to remember that and try and change that. But also, Lord, I ask that you would um, fix that thing among us, that you would um, come into our lives and help us to be more like Christ. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.